blessed to be alive and be saved and be filled with that spirit of the Holy Ghost. How many of y'all appreciate having the Holy Ghost today? Appreciate the word of God. Thank God for being a wonderful God. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to be dealing with a subject today, the soul of man. The soul of man. You know, I appreciate being a minister of the word of God. You know, I am privileged. I consider myself to be blessed. I'll be one of the most, uh, and you know, and I'm on it. Not only me, I want y'all, if you have a call of God in your life to carry the word of God, if you have a call of God to preach the word of God, y'all, that's a big deal. You don't understand. We are some of the most important men and women on earth. It's not that we're special. It's the call of God. It's the call of God that he has placed in us that makes us special. You know, sometimes men of God walk around with their chest out like they're somebody, but, you know, I understand it because, but it ain't right. It's still wrong. That's called being arrogant. Amen? But they understand, the ones that really understand that when God called you to preach the word, woman of God, when God called you to preach the word, Man of God, when God call you to preach the word of God, that is one of the most important things, that you, assignments that you will have on this earth. Knowing your purpose is important. Knowing what God has called you to do is very important. Don't get me wrong. Being, being blessed of the Lord is important. But being called to preach the word of God is serious business. And Lord willing, I said, Lord willing, I would not neglect that gift, that opportunity that God has placed in me. Amen. Amen. And I don't want ever, I don't want none of y'all that ever, that God ever called to preach the word of God to act as though that call is a small thing. Souls of men are in your hands. The souls of men are in your hands. The souls of women are in your hands, at your fingertips. And God wants us to be careful how we handle those souls. Hallelujah. God, we ask that you open up our understanding as we open up the word of God today. Turn to Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Amen. Are we there yet? Hallelujah. Genesis 2 and verse 7. That's why I employ, I encourage the men and women of God that's got a call in their life. Be mindful not to neglect that call. And the word of God says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Everybody repeat after me. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. Amen. See, see, your soul matters. Your life matters too, but your soul is very important. Somebody say, your soul is very important. Whether or not you live or die, your soul is very important. Amen? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a loving God, but he created the soul of man. And that soul of man is going to spend eternity somewhere. And that soul of man is going to spend eternity in heaven or with God or in Hades. Amen? Amen. So that soul, so you think it's your life, right? How many of y'all think this is all about your life? Raise your hand. I used to think that way. I thought this was my life. I thought it was about me. I thought it was about what I wanted to do. I thought it was about what I wanted to accomplish. I thought it was about me. The devil had me to see. The devil had me to see, believing that I belong to myself. Whether or not you say it or whether or not you ain't say it, your soul belongs to God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After all likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. 
and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeping upon the earth. Amen? So God created man, what? In his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Amen? And the word of God goes on. And God blessed them. And then God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowls of the earth. And over everything that liveth. Every living thing that moves upon the earth. But when God created man, he created male and female. He created man. Mankind, the homo sapiens species, is called mankind. And when he created the homo sapiens species called mankind, he created male and female. Praise the Lord. So when you think about man, when the word of God is talking about in the Bible, it ain't talking about the male. The male man always. It's talking about man and woman. Talk about man and woman. So any man that thinks it's all about the man, baby, you need to think again. He said, male and female created he them from the get-go. <laughs> from the get-go. I'm from the get-go. From the get Amen? Here we go again. This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam and Eve. No, he called their name Adam. Eve had the same name that Adam had. Adam happened to name Eve Eve, but God called them both Adam. So any man that thinks that you the bomb and that this is all about you, let me think again. God called them both the same. Let's keep on going. Male and female created he them. And blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they was created. Now he's talking about the male Adam. And he lived 130 some years, okay? And he got sons in his own likeness. And he's talking about him. But from the get go, he was talking about man, Adam with both of them. And both of them, God gave a soul. He gave both a soul. A man's soul ain't more important than the woman's soul. The woman's soul ain't more important than the man's soul. All of us got a soul. And that soul, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 18. That sin, it is going to die. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18. And verse number 4. If you get it before me, go ahead and read it. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4. A day of reckoning is coming for all of us. Don't Ezekiel chapter number 18 and verse 4. Go ahead and read. You got it for me. Go ahead. I'm, I'm almost there. If you don't get it real quick, I'm going I'm to be there. Ezekiel chapter number 18 and verse 4. Are we there yet? Behold. Behold. All souls are mine. All souls are who? Mine. Behold. All souls is their own. Wait a minute. Who told you that lie that you belong to yourself? Who told you that your life was your own? Somebody been lying to you. Somebody been lying to you. Somebody been pushing something in your ear that ain't of God. Somebody been hoodwinking hood you, praise the Lord. Somebody been deceiving you because you think it's all about you. Sometimes I didn't even think it was all about me, but God gave me the primitive. God gave me the revelation. This ain't about me. This ain't about you. I ain't having no more church. See, it's just because you think it's about you. I ain't doing this and I ain't doing that. Because you think it's about you. The reason why we always say, I ain't gonna do this and I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna go here. I ain't gonna work there. I ain't gonna do this. See, the reason why you do that and the reason why I do that and I've done it in the past because I think it's about me. And you think it's about you. The sinner on the street corner thinks it's about them. Have you ever seen anyone running from God? They just run. Got to get away from God. When I get good and ready, I'm going to get saved. I ain't ready yet, Pastor. Mm. I'm talking with people. 
Tell her, told me they ain't really. And the next week they was off this earth. This ain't no game. I don't play games with folks. These are souls. These are souls. Oh, Pastor, he always he uses a scare tactic. Baby, this is see, let me let y'all know something about what they call scare tactics. Reality is ten times scarier than scare tactics. If you ever get a vision of Hades and see the men and, and, and see see people dancing on their way to Hades and it's having a good time, turning it up and doing all this kind of stuff. As they dance down that little narrow street, actually it's a broad street, big old Broadway street, and over the cliff, down, 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 down to the pits of Hades. Ain't no joke no more. That's the vision God gave me. And I'm sharing it with the world. Because some people really don't think that there is a Hades. Because if they felt and understood that there's a place called Hades, they wouldn't live any kind of way. They wouldn't tell the preacher, I would believe, but you don't, you, you're too hard. I would believe, could you imagine somebody in the presence of God on judgment day and said, I would have got saved, but the preacher preached too hard to me. The preacher preached too hard to me, so I decided not to get saved. That ain't going to hold up on judgment day, y'all. All souls belong to who? Read it again. All souls are mine. Woo! What happened to the soul that said it? As of the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sent it, it shall die. It ain't going to be with the Lord. The soul that sent it is going to die. You gotta tell them. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. The soul that sent it is gonna die. Drop down to verse 20. The soul that sent it, it shall die. The Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. God meant this so much, He said it twice in the same chapter. <laughs> he meant business about it so much. You ain't gotta go to another chapter. You ain't gotta go to, go to Genesis to find it. You ain't gotta go to Revelation to find it. This ain't a problem. It might be a problem, sir. But I put God put it in the same chapter. <laughs> he mean business about this thing. And Hades ain't no laughing matter. It ain't no laughing matter. What? Read it again, please. The soul that sent it is going to die. Lord, have mercy. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 9. 24, verse 9. Matthew 24, verse 9. You know, I, some people don't really believe that God will judge his people. Saints, the day is going to come when we're going to all have to step before God front and center. Front and center. And see, sometimes you don't have to, I don't have time to hype you out. I got to tell you the truth and make it plain. Make it plain and simple, amen? See, sometimes us as preachers, we want to be accepted. Nobody want to be hated. Yeah, I, I don't care. The hardest core preachers don't want nobody hating them. Y'all, holding this folks don't want nobody hating them. And so sometimes what we do in holiness is that we compromise the word because we don't want nobody to hate us. Compromise the word. We don't tell people the full truth because we're afraid the full truth won't be received. Listen to this. Amen. This is Jesus telling them about the last days. Amen. Amen. And verse number uh, number eight says, "And all these things in the beginning of sorrow, so I'm about to begin. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be loved of all nations for my name's sake." Do it say, "Be loved of all nations for my name's sake." 
The Bible says, and you shall be hated of all nations, of Great Britain, of the United Kingdom, of, of Canada, of Australia, of France, of Gog and Magog, which is Russia, of all these, of Africa, the motherland, they're going to hate you too. Of age of Japan and all these days, of China, they go, the Bible says you're going to be hated of all nations for my name's sake. All of us preachers that's trying to get everybody to love us, trying to get the world to love us, trying to impress the world, the Bible says we're going to be hated of all nations for whose name's sake? For his name's sake. No matter how nice we preach to you, well, not, no matter how, how bad we can see, they tell the preacher to shut up. Don't preach against this. Don't preach against that. Don't offend that person. Don't offend that. Baby, the day gonna come. I don't care if we say it nice and soft. Repentance is still means the same thing. If I tell you, you need to repent. Come about your sin. Or was it not screaming? Somebody might get a little nervous. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Hey, Jesus. It's still the same thing. It means to give up sin. You can't be a shack daddy and sleep around for and you can't club and you can't drink your gin and juice and drink your beer and smoke your cannabis and, and smoke on your crack pipe and and be in a right relationship. You can't sleep around and you ain't married to no. You, repentance never change. But to the average church world today, baby, you can do what you want. Only thing you gotta do is believe. You keep on believing them lies. You're gonna lift up your eyes in haze. And the false prophet or preacher that preached to you and told you you can do the same thing, they probably gonna be right there looking at you. Why you here? You have to change. The soul that sent it, it shall die. So if you are got a call of God in your life, preach the truth in love. Tell them the truth in love. Maybe God love you. You can tell folks God loved them and them folks still ain't want to be saved. <sighs> they don't care because they think it's about them. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then many shall be what offended. What? And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. We live in a day and age that church folks is betraying each other. We're coming against each other. Last I checked, my enemy ain't in the house of God. You're coming against me because I preach this. I'm coming against you because you preach that. When we realize that we actually have a devil out there and he's sitting back there laughing at us as we come against each other. I'm, I'm sick and tired of preachers preaching against me. And I ain't preaching you preach against not only me. I mean holiness. And don't understand that the Bible says without holiness shall no man, shall no, shall no man see the Lord. Amen. Ain't nobody gonna make it to heaven without holiness. So when you step against holiness and when you preach against holiness, the Bible says you ain't gonna see the Lord. I feel sorry for everyone that hear these lying prophets and preachers that won't tell the people to come up out their sin. You won't tell, you, you, you preach hallelujah, didn't he do it? And the Lord show sure gonna make a way. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My storehouse is blessed. My baskets are blessed. God got a blessing for him. And that is all good. I want to hear that sometime myself. <laughs> Woo, I want to hear it sometime myself. But if I ain't living right, see, if I ain't living right, the Bible tells me what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? The whole world. And lose his soul. Recently, he ran, met across a man that um, 
Me and my wife was out getting a bite to eat. I ran across this man, and he said that somebody used witchcraft to do certain things. And I said, really? So I, I told him that, you know, God don't like that and all that, you know. And then I knew someone that was into that, and they repented of their sins. They repented of that before they died. And he said, that's how they got the car. That's how that individual got this, and that's how they got that. They got a car, a nice car. They got a nice house through using witchcraft. I said, they can't take it with them. I don't care who driving around in a nice car or got a nice house or got a nice this or that. That stuff cannot go with you in that ground. And if you die in your sins, you're going to Hades.